number two from page 157. We're completing an axonometric projection style question with this object. And so I'm starting with my origin in the middle of point O. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the axes, okay? Or axi as it's sometimes known. And I'm going to create my y axis at 30 degrees from O. I'm going to come down at 30 degrees in both directions. To decide which one is the X and the Z, I'm going to look at my object that I have on the screen in the top right hand corner. So A is always your front view. And A is looking from the right, which means it's going to be projected on the left, which means that this line here is going to be my X axis because it's your width. Okay? And then this line here is going to be my Z axis. So I label them in there as well. Then what I'm going to do is, <coughs> from the origin O, I'm going to step up by 60 millimeters. Okay. So step up by 60 millimeters. Put it in a point. That point is going to be labeled as A. It's the first of the three points on my axonometric plane. I'm then going to draw down at 60 degrees from A. To hit the Z axis, and I'm going to draw 60 degrees from A to hit the X axis. I will then label those two points B and C. I'll join them up with a horizontal line, giving me my axonometric plane. I'm going to use this plane to create my three <coughs> orthographic projection views. So from B, I always start with the plan view because I find it the easiest to draw. I'm going to bring B down vertically and C down vertically. In this area, I'm going to choose roughly about halfway on the pitch. Maybe a little bit lower than halfway. I'm going to recreate the BC line. So that is my axonometric trace. Okay, now the trace is a line is a, a trace is a line that is created where two planes meet. So my tri triangular axonometric plane meets the horizontal plane here of the XZ axis. So that is going to be labeled as BC. Now, what I need to do now is I need to create a semicircle. Okay. And to create that semicircle, I need the center point. Okay. To get the center point, there is an easier way or a quicker way, but I'm teaching you the long way because this is more applicable, especially at the leave and circle level. Okay, so when you choose this subject and you move on to this subject later on, for your leave and cert, you'll be using this exact same technique. So I'm going to open up the compass over halfway. I'll describe an arc on one side, an arc on the other side. Keep the compass the exact same dimension and size. And we put it onto C and we scribe an arc above and below. This gives us the bisector of the line BC, which will then help us position the compass for drawing my semicircle. Okay, that semicircle is going to be joined between B and C. Joining from B to C. And now I then take my 45 degree set square. Actually, sorry, I'm going to continue the y axis on to hit that semicircle, and wherever it hits the semicircle, that's my origin. Okay, so that there now is. Oh, whose is it? Sure. Turn it off, please. Don't just put it on silent. Turn it off. So, from O, we're going to go down at 45 degrees, like so, and 45 degrees in the opposite direction. Now, these blue lines, I have these coloured because they are matching my three-dimensional area. So, this blue line is the x-axis, and this blue line here is the z-axis. Alright? And that is that plan view, which we're used to the plan view set up to draw and so if I look at my orthographic projection from before 
which one of these is my plan view this is my plan view it's going to be orientated at an angle like that and it's going to go in here like so this is my front elevation view it's going to be slightly twisted and go up there and that's my end view it's going to be slightly twisted and go up here in this space so that's why I want you to have that sheet open in front of you because we've already done this question in orthographic projection so we know what they look like we just have to position them inside the different planes of reference so now what I'm going to do <coughs> excuse me is I'm going to create my front elevation plane and my end view plane so from B and A I'm going to draw it off at 30 degrees Drawing off at 30 degrees, drawing a 60 degree line, <coughs> excuse me, the 60 degree line I should have in red because it's replicating the line AB, which is part of my axonometric plane. There's A, there's B. Same thing again, guys, we're going to bisect the line AB, which we know how to do already. All prior knowledge, we're going to bisect the line. <coughs> once we bisect that we'll join the two of them up at a 30 degree angle that gives me my centre point and from there I'll draw a semicircle the semicircle is only a construction line so it doesn't need to stand out it doesn't need to be heavy I'll then take the z-axis, continue the z-axis on to hit my semicircle, and that will give me the origin, where the origin is located. I'll then join the origin through A, and that will replicate the y-axis, the height of the object, any height dimensions. And I'll bring O through corner B which will replicate the x-axis and any width dimensions. Okay, so if you wanted to help yourself a little bit, okay, y equals height, x equals width. Down here, <coughs> x equals width, and I should be drawing it there, but anyway, um, Z equals depth. Okay, so that might help you. And I'm going to do the exact same scenario over here on the right hand side. So at a 30 degree angle, positioning my A and C this time, 60 degree angle is going to be in red pen because it's replicating the axonometric plane or the trace of the axonometric plane. And so I'm now going to draw a semicircle. So again, making this slightly bigger than halfway. An arc on one side, arc on the other. Moving it to C, arc on one side, arc on the other. At a 30 degree angle, I'll join them up. There is my bisector. There's the center of the line AC. So therefore, I will now draw my semicircle. continue on the x-axis here to hit that semicircle that gives me the position of O. I'll join O through A which replicates the y-axis. I'll join O through C which replicates the z-axis. So my setup is now fully complete. Is that alright? Yeah. You could, but this is what I'm saying to you. I want you to draw the semicircle because I want you to be able to answer Leibniz's questions as well. And this is the technique that you will use at Leibniz's for the extra couple of seconds or maybe two minutes that it takes to draw the semicircle. It's worth it when it comes to the more difficult questions. Is that all right? Yeah. 
So you're saying instead of drawing the semi, like, you still need the semicircle. You always need the semicircle because this line needs to come and hit the semicircle in order to find it. But the bisection part is the bit that's a little bit different. Okay, but we still need the semicircle. Okay, I could essentially bring that z-axis through, and if you notice, watch what happens. If I bring the z-axis through, it'll hit the exact middle where my um, where my arc is. Okay, if I do it this way, it'll be the exact same thing. So bring it through the x-axis, it hits exactly where you put your compass to draw the semicircle in the first place. But things change when you get to leave answer questions, and and and. Uh, this technique will, will stand you a lot longer than showing you a brand new technique when you get that far. Is that alright? Okay. So now we have our setup done. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to draw a sketch of my object. And the reason I'm going to draw a sketch of the object is because I want to label all of the points so that I can, I can make things easier for me on the draw. So down here in the corner, I'm just going to draw a quick little sketch of my object. Okay. Try with your crow's foot. So we're going to go up at an angle here. Come across. Up at the angle. Also, just going to draw the hidden detail that I can't see because those are points I still need to find as well. So, hidden detail, dashed lines. Okay, and now I'm going to label all those points. So, the four points on the bottom, I'm going to label number one, two, three, and four. These four top points, I'm going to label five, six, seven, and eight. And these two points here. Uh, 9, 10, and 11, and 12. So I have all the points of my object labeled. I'm now going to transfer them to my 2Ds, which will then help me with the 3 Do you understand? So first off, I'm going to start with my plan view. I'm going to complete the plan view of this. Now remembering that this is view A, which means that these measurements this way are for the x-axis. Okay, so that measurement going that way is for the x-axis and this measurement here is going to be for the z-axis. This measurement here is simply for the y-axis. Alright, I hope that makes sense, yeah? So, plan view here, I'm dealing with the x and the, and the z. So, I will be coming out this direction to the z be coming out 60 millimeters. So I'll put in my 60 millimeter mark there. I can use my 45 degree set square here to do this, like so, and that's going to be 100 millimeters in length. So mark off 100. I also need 40 millimeter mark. So with, with three lines, I have my plan view more or less completed, very close to being completed. And that measurement up the top then is 25, isn't it? 35. <coughs> and I'm gonna come from this side here, 35 there as well. And I'll go here. So if I was to color in the surfaces, of my object. This is a green surface here. This is a yellow surface and yellow surface. There's my yellow surface there. And this is why we draw the little sketch. We color in the sketch to help us understand and visualize what I'm drawing. because it can be confusing. All right, and the green surface then is gonna go in there. So there's my slope surface drawn. As well, and I can 
shade this in a little bit better afterwards, but you get the idea of my positioning of everything. So there's my plan view complete. Now I'm going to do the front elevation view, which will be this side, because it's the x and the y axis, which is dealing with my height and width. All right, so I will construct that now. And again, I showed you this the last question, but a quick way to, to do this is by using your set square at the 30 and 45 degree angle. So any heights I need, I can draw it by using the combination of my T square and two set squares. Because that, if you notice that there, matches up to your, your Y axis. So like the askew. All right, and um, if I turn it that way, it matches up, should match up. No, so slightly off. What happened? My page must be crooked, isn't it? It's slightly off, I know. So something's gone a little bit awry. Um, so the measurements that I'm going to use then again are 100 because this is my X so anything along this line guys are you looking anything along here along the X axis any of those measurements must be the same along this measurement can you, take, can you stay with me okay so the X axis here so anything along that there should be the same over this side and again I'm just going to color this in this is going to be my orange surface so these are the measurements I'm dealing with here for my object and you can see in the top right hand corner all the measurements of the actual object so I'm dealing with the orange surface so I'll measure out 100 measure back 40 and from right to left 35 and I measure all my heights on the y-axis so the heights of this are 25 and 60 so 25 and 60. What I can use is I can use sliding set squares to draw this grid in. my orange surface according to my 3D sketch. So the orange surface there is the orange surface there. Last one I'm going to do is going to be a red surface. Okay. So it's going to be here and it's also going to be the green surface. So the red and the green. I'm going to draw this looking in from the right hand side it's going to be projected over here I got some of my pens out of the way <coughs> and the same thing okay so I'm going to use my measurements here so the width of the object is 60 millimeters so I'll measure across 60 on the z-axis because this z-axis is the same as that z-axis so any measurements along here will be the same along there the heights of the object along the y-axis were 25 and 60. So I'll use those measurements in there as well because I used them on the previous y-axis. So what I'll do now is using the combination t-square and set-square, just making sure I have them at the right angle. There's that, we'll go up there. That comes across, and that comes across. This here is my red surface from my 3D sketch in the bottom left hand corner, remember? And 
the green surface is what I can see here as well. Okay, so now I have all my coloured surfaces according to my 3D sketch in the corner. It took me 30 seconds to do that 3D sketch. I have all my labels on my 3D sketch. I'm going to transfer them to my um, 2Ds, which will then help me do my 3D. Absolutely. Of course, you don't need to ask for that, yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to combine them into the middle to create the 3D. So labelling here is going to be really important. So this corner here... On my 3D sketch, I've labelled it as corner 11 and corner 1. This one here is corner 12 and corner 2. This here is corner 4 and 3. So let's bring up those four points, 1, 2, 3 and 4. I'll bring them up vertically. So bringing four points up vertically at one time. 1, 2, 3 and 4. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to use either one of these views to bring them in here to draw my 3D. So this corner here is 1 and 2, and this corner here is 3 and 4. So I can bring those, both of those at 30 degrees. 30 degrees is the key ingredient here, guys, because it's an isometric projection. Isometric is always to do with 30 and 60 degrees. And so where they meet, so 1 and 2 come along, where does 1 meet 1? It meets it here. Now this is where I'm going to use a little bit of a black pen just to highlight the area. Alright. I'm going to take my black pen and I'm going to highlight my dots. Alright. So, where does 1 meet 1? It meets it here. That is point number 1. Where does 2 meet 2? It meets it there. Where does 3 meet 3? They meet here. Where does 4 meet 4? It meets there. If I want to justify myself and make sure I'm using the correct point, I'm going to introduce my third view and see does my third view hit it in the exact same position. There is point number 3. If I bring 3 along, does it hit it there? Absolutely does. So at least I know I'm doing it right. Does it hit number 2? Well, I'm slightly, slightly askew. Something has gone just a little bit off, but that's fine. So the two of them, three and two, hit the exact same points. So I have all four points in the correct location. I'm going to now bring points 11, 12, 9 and 10. <coughs> so this is 11 and 9. And this is 10 and 12. I'll bring them down at 30 degrees. Two lines. Over here, this point is 9 and 10, and this point here is 11 and 12. I'm going to bring them at 30 degrees. So I'm using two different views here this time round to confirm that I'm going to get the right location. So 9 and 10 coming down that way, 9 and 10 coming down that way. Where does 9 hit 9? Hits it here. Where does 10 hit 10? hits it there. Where does 11 hit 11? Hits it there. Where does 12 hit 12? Hits it there. So I'm starting to form my shape. So if I draw it in here, so something just slightly askew on this. T squares gone. So if I start filling it in, in heavy pen, you'll see my 3D object, my isometric projection of the object will start standing out. And everything is at 30 degrees in one direction or 30 degrees in the other direction or it's vertical. It's quite easy. We've done this already for our isometric projection. We know how that works. 
now I'm starting to form it. So the top shape now, the top of the object, the very, very tippy top. I'm going to bring this down at 30 degrees. Again, trying to make sure I'm as accurate as possible and that my T square or set square don't slip or slide. And I'm going to bring those same points this way. And this way. And where do they meet? So these are labeled as 5 and 6, 7 and 8, 5 and 7, 6 and 8. So where do they meet? Where does 5 meet 5? Meets it here. Where does 6 meet 6? Meets it there. Where does 7 meet 7? Meets there. Where does 8 meet 8? It meets there. So we just join them in. So you can use a combination, a combination of two of the three views. You only need two. The third one can just reinforce, can just reinforce what you are looking at, making sure you're getting the right point. So you notice I'm drawing this all in heavy pen just to make it stand out because it's overlapping some of the object. Everything's at either 30 degrees in one direction, 30 degrees in the other direction, or it's vertical, apart from this sloped surface here. So I join them up. I join them up. I colour my surfaces in to match my 3D sketch so that I can understand what's going on. This is my sloped surface here. Two colours have fallen off. So I'm going to get them. So this is my orange. And my yellow surface is here. Now, is that okay guys? That is object number two from page 157. <coughs> and that's how we can